We want to thank you for tuning in today to our newest program, Talking It Out. In this newest segment, Pastor David and Lorray will be discussing such topics as Bible prophecy, current events, and the Word of God. We trust each of you will enjoy today's edition of Talking It Out. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in to our part two series of repentance. Hope you guys enjoyed the first part. So let's jump back into the second part. I hope that you guys enjoy it. We have so many people today who don't see themselves in need of a savior. Yeah. Every one of us has need of a savior. Oh, yeah. The man, the, pub, the, the Pharisee here that prayed within himself, didn't see his need for a savior. Mm -hmm. He's telling God, I do all the right things. Yeah. You know, I fast, I pray, I tithe. Those are nothing but works. Mm -hmm. Works do not save anyone. Right. Now I know people regretfully put their faith in their works and not what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah, absolutely. It's what Jesus did on the cross that saves absolutely. men. Absolutely. It, it's not your works of writing a check, doing this, doing that, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace mm -hmm. are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. So grace is a gift. Exactly. Salvation is a gift. Uh, when you give someone a gift, you don't give it to them because they merited it. Yeah. You give it to them because you wanted to bless mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. you, you wanted to be generous. You wanted to be benevolent. You wanted to be kind. And after you, you do it, you don't throw it up in their face that I've done this for you. I've done that for you. And so you owe me this. You know, that's not, you didn't give with a, a giving heart. You gave almost begrudgingly. You know, you, you didn't, you didn't do it because you wanted to. You did it because, you know, oh, the, they're going to, they're going to eventually going to owe me something. Paul addressed tithing and giving some people give out of necessity. Mm -hmm. He said some give grudgingly. Mm -hmm. Man, I hate to pay my tithes, right. but here's my tithes. You won't get a blessing paying mm -hmm. tithes like that. No. Paul said, but God loves a cheerful giver. Exactly. And the Greek word is hilarious. Hel and that's where we get the English word hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. Hilariously we give. Cheerfully. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Okay. It, that's, 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 the, that's the heart of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The father gave his son willingly cheerfully to mm -hmm. redeem us mm -hmm. and i've always said this when christ comes into your heart you also immediately receive a spirit of giving yeah john three sixteen, the renowned golden text of the new testament for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son god is a giver yeah christ is a giver people become born again they are attached to the vine, which is Christ. They become givers. Exactly. The, the, the apple is not on the bark of the tree. It's not on the side of the trunk. It's out on the there on the, on the branches, mm -hmm. on the end. John 15, 5, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. If you're attached to Christ, you bring forth the exact fruit of, of, of who he is. Yeah. And then he says, and without me, you can do, you do nothing. nothing. Yeah. You can do nothing. Now, this Pharisee was that man. He wasn't attached to the branch. He, his, 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 he, he was, he, he was fruitless. Mm -hmm. uh, I should say he was not attached to the vine. He was fruitless yeah. because he was attached to himself. Self, exactly. So what would that make him? Barren? Yeah. He, he couldn't produce any yeah, fruit. Exactly. Because he wasn't attached to the vine. Yep. You have to be attached to the tree and the yeah. trunk and the roots where the sustenance and all the sources for nutrition to produce that apple. That apple, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a unique thing. It starts out a, a blossom, yeah. a flower. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? We just had a garden this last year, and it is. It was so amazing. You know, I'm look, sitting there looking at the corn seeds, and then, you know, weeks later, I have this huge stalk, and I'm like, how did this come from that, you know? And then the, the squash plants, you see the little blossom at first, and then it, you know you know you're going to get a squash. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's the analogy yeah. 
of I'm the vine, you're the branches. Yeah. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth, the word Good. there, same. The same bringeth forth much fruit. It is the same fruit. Exactly. It, it's not a different fruit. Yeah. Because the fruit is a manifestation of your attachment to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you know all too well, I know people who profess they're Christians, mm -hmm. but they have no fruit. Right. They're bitter. They're full of rancor. They're always condescending. They sow discord. They're clamorous. They speak evil. Mm -hmm. they, they just, they're, they're evil people. Why? They are not attached to They the haven't vine. truly rep repented. They haven't truly no. turned around, and they haven't changed their will to do the right thing. Now, they may have started out right, mm -hmm. but that's why God allows every man, woman, boy, and girl to retain their free will. Yeah. And I mean, that's when you then have a backslider. That's exactly yeah. right. I'm 65 years of age. Nobody can stop my will. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to go out there and get in the car and go to the liquor store and buy a pint of whiskey or whatever, come back, nobody's going to stop no. me. Mm -mm. But I don't do that because I don't want to do that. Because I love you're convicted, the Lord. yeah. Exactly. You know and that so, it's wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Your strong. will, your will it now is completely different from what it was when you were 20 years old. That's the indication you're born again. Yeah. That's the indication. Your will is not, well, this is going to make me feel good. You know, I'll do it today and tomorrow I'll, you know, see how I can please God. It doesn't work like that. No, we're supposed to be vessels of honor. Yeah. You're supposed to glorify him. How is it going to glorify God? It's not. Yeah. And it's going to affect a lot of people. You yeah. know. I understand this. Mm -hmm. Most of you watching this video don't understand it, and that's not to be pompous or demeaning. God has called me to minister, mm -hmm. but no one knows the times, the days, the hour that I sit and I contemplate my personal life. If I sin, I err, I go back into open sin. What will it do to hundreds and thousands of people? That you could have won their souls, and now you can't because you messed up. What about those who have followed the ministry? Exactly. They're going to think, wow, I've been supporting this man. I've been following this man and thought he was a man of God. And then he goes and does something like this. See, that's constantly on my mind. Mm -hmm. Now, I know. Yeah. I know all too well. There are people that have a, a, a microphone and a video camera, and they're always soliciting money. But I promise you, they never think about those consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They never think. But see, as a, as a, as a, as a true God call minister, I am constantly conscious of that. Yeah. See, because I know if I go into sin, I'm going to hurt and grieve a lot of people, not only the Holy Spirit, but I will negatively affect the lives of many yeah. people. This is why I work so diligently to, to make sure that I don't injure what God has put in my yeah. hands. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I keep my arms length distance. I'm very careful. Um, there are certain circles I'm invited into. I don't go. Yeah. I, I turn them down because I'm not going to come into that circle and allow myself to be contaminated or give that person or that circle credibility. And hurt your witness. A absolutely. Yeah. You see, uh, that's why Paul said, know them that labor among you. Mm -hmm. You need to know who you are associating yourself mm -hmm. with, because not everyone is what they say they are. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why they're called hypocrites. Yeah, exactly. They feign, they portray themselves as one thing, but they... And that's, behind, that, that's that double-minded. Mm -hmm. Behind the scenes, they live another way, another life. They would never want you to know that. They keep it camouflaged, they keep it hidden. But, you know, I never know when I'm going to get a phone call and I've got to be ready a death, a funeral, hospital visit, or whatever the case might be. I don't have to say time to say, Lord, I, I need to repent. I, yeah. I, I can't go to the yeah. hospital. I can't preach that funeral because I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. You don't have time for that. You have to live the life of Christianity. The other thing is you don't know when the Lord's coming back, so you better be right at all times. I, absolutely, absolutely. So let's look at the Pharisee again. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee. That was a worthless thankfulness for nothing. Yeah. Because he didn't contribute anything to God. He contributed all to himself. Mm -hmm. Revelation 1, 5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Yeah. 
It is his shed blood exactly. that atones for sin. That's why there's nothing anybody could ever do in, in a million lifetimes to save yourself, yeah. to redeem yourself. You just can't do it. They fail to recognize Jesus paid the entirety of the price on exactly. the cross. We use the term, we hear the term, I don't use it in the term of, of medicine, but we hear the term efficacy in the, the medicine, uh, the, 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 the uh, hospitals and uh, doctors and surgeons and uh, pharmacists, efficacy. The word efficacy means the desired effect. So they give you penicillin, the desired effect is that it will kill what's in your body mm -hmm. and make you whole. The efficacy, the efficacious work of Christ on the cross cleanses, redeems, and forgives us of our sin through his blood. Right. Uh, Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. So with the redemption, and you need to keep this in your mind because people say, well, I did this. I don't care what you did. That didn't save you. Yeah. Exactly. Redemption is through his blood. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get back uh, to the very fundamentals and rudimentary aspect of Christ's work on the cross, it was all about his blood. Yeah. Because his blood was sinless. Yeah. And no man could be the, a substitution for mankind except Christ. Exactly. Because all men are sinners. Exactly. That's why the, the high priest, even though he went into the Holy of Holies once a year, he applied the blood of that Paschal Passover lamb on the mercy seat, that still did not atone for sin because even that animal had a sin nature. Yeah. So that's why Christ... It's like the blood wasn't pure. Exactly. Yeah. It, was, it was tainted with mm -hmm. sin. So this was the very reason Christ had to be conceived had to be through him, the Holy yeah. Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I was sharing some weeks ago, and, and a person s sent me an email and said, I, I never once thought about that. That was really profound. And I was talking about God had to make Jesus incarnate so he could come mm -hmm. and understand the things we struggle with as a person. Yeah. See, because God, James 1, 12 says, let no man say when he is tempted, mm -hmm. I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with sin, neither tempteth he any man. Exactly. You can't tempt God with sin. No. And so, he doesn't tempt you. The devil tempts that's you. That's right. Yeah. He doesn't. He may allow us to be tested. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't tempt us into the situation where we fall from right. grace. So God allowed his son to take on the form of a man so he could now come and walk the earth mm -hmm. and understand your temptation, my temptation, what it means to weep, what it means to cry, what it means to be bereaved. Christ was always around bereavement. He was around death. Mm -hmm. Lazarus was mm -hmm. dead. He died as a man. But what it, it means again to be angry. Day. Yeah, yeah hey, all of those. Mm -hmm. So because he was made a man, he understands everything about our lives. You know, uh, I, I get... Uh, uh, an email often, I prayed, I repented, I asked God to forgive me. Two weeks later, I failed and committed that same sin again. They didn't change their will. you got to have your mind made up. It's a decision. It's not an emotion. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it is, it is a, it's a determination. Yeah, absolutely. But here's, here, here's, I want to point this out. Just because you failed, you don't quit. Absolutely not. You always say, get back up, keep going. It's kind of like, you know, I wanted to talk about the prodigal son, you know, touch on it a little bit, but it's it's kind of the same as us. You know, he got his inheritance. I'm sure a lot of people know the story. He got his inheritance. He went and partied. You know, he was at the lowest of lows, you know, working with the pigs. And he goes back home, you know, and, and his father runs out. He didn't even have to say, you know, make me your servant. Before he could say anything, his father's given him the, the greatest robe, you know, his sandals, put a ring on his finger, kissed him. And that's how God is with us. You know, Absolutely. he comes to us. He, he, he wants all sinners to come back. But I, I want to emphasize the, the failure part. Yeah. All have sin. Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes 8, 7, 7, 7. There's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Right. That sin nature is always in your life. Mm -hmm. I, I try to live daily without sinning. Mm -hmm. uh, I got provoked terribly the other day. 
And the guy said he was trying to be humorous. Well, it wasn't humorous to me. And um, he, he made a very smart, arrogant statement to me. I said, do you mind moving your truck so I can get my sack read? He said, you don't want to walk around my truck to load your sack read? Hmm. You had to stop and think. I, like. I, grabbed, I grabbed the door handle and got ready to open the door and get out of the truck. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa dude, I'm, I'm just trying to be funny. I said, that's not funny to me because no. those bags weigh 80 pounds a piece. Yeah. Then he offered to load them. Yeah, he said, he said I'll, I'll help you load them. I said, leave me <laughs> alone. Yeah, he done pushed your buttons. And, and I said, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. But that guy, you don't want to walk around my truck to load your sack creep? No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. You know, but it hit me so wrong. And I, I admittedly grabbed the door handle. And when the door opened, he, man, he said, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, uh, I, I was just trying to be funny. Yeah. I said, well, it didn't come off as funny. Oh, no, yeah. And then his willingness to help want to help me load. See, that's that's reality. I, mm-hmm. I don't sit here yeah. and pontificate. I'm some self-righteous, bigoted guy that I don't have a temper, that I don't get upset, that I'm not tempted, that mm-hmm. I'm not tested. You were we tested, all yeah. are. Mm-hmm. You know, thank God I didn't sin. Exactly. I didn't do anything. Yeah. You know, and I loaded my concrete up and I drove off in peace. But the devil is always working in to a way attack. to mm-hmm. attack you, to mm-hmm. bring you down, to cause you to fall. Yeah. Now, I could have fallen and sinned. Yeah. Thank God I did not. But let me say to those who do fall, to those who do stumble and those who do sin, don't stay there. Mm-mm. Get up. Yeah, absolutely. Get up in the name of Jesus. Repent. Mm-hmm. Ask God to forgive you for the filthy outburst or the anger that you lost control or you went out and you got drunk or mm-hmm. you went back to the computer and you watched pornography. Don't lay there in the scent. Get up. Exactly. The Holy Spirit will wash you off yeah. and put you back on the right mm-hmm. path. Absolutely. But see, when you fall, there's the devil browbeating mm-hmm. you spiritually and emotionally more than Christ was beaten Yeah. and condemning you saying, see there, you can't live right. Mm-hmm. You don't have enough of God to be victorious. And then he starts, he starts condemning over and over. And then some people get so beat up by condemnation and guilt. They say, I quit. Yeah. I'm just going to stay here. I I, I quit. You can't quit. Mm -mm. I've said this before as a pastor, put a saddle on the altar at your church and ride it all the way to heaven. Yeah. If that's what it takes. Yeah. Mark 8, 36, 37. What should it profit a man? If he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Mm-hmm. I don't care what it costs you, pay it. Yeah. Make it. Absolutely. Don't leave God and remain unjustified. Mm-mm. Jesus said the publican, he went home justified. He went home right in the eyes of God. Now, he didn't go home right in the eyes of the Pharisee. Yeah. Because the Pharisee was judgmental. I thank God I'm not like that man. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm this kind of a man. And so um, Psalms 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly or completely cast down, cast down mm-hmm. but the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You know, when you guys were little, and I'd have you by the hand walking across a parking lot, you stumble, you trip, I just pull you up. Yeah, where you don't actually go down. You you did, you were not utterly cast, cast down. down. Yeah, you were going that way, but you saved us. But I, I, I pulled you up. That's the that's the greatness of having your hand in the hand of Christ. Mm-hmm. He just pulls, pulls you, you up. Pulls you right up. You, you stumbled. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, uh, it's irrefutable. Mm-hmm. You, you stumbled, mm-hmm. but you weren't utterly cast exactly. down. Exactly. And as human beings, we fail. Again, what is the secret? Repentance and asking God to forgive you. Mm-hmm. David in Psalms 32, 5. I want to I share this. We're getting down to the end today. And I hope people have been blessed by the word of God and, and by the reality of truthfulness. Psalms 32, verse 5. David said, I acknowledged my sin unto thee. And mine iniquity have I not hid. 
How many people try to hide their sins? Yeah. David said, I've not tried to hide my sin. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. That's twofold. I forgave, or I confessed, thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. That's two parts. The iniquitous part. The iniquitous part is the actual physical act. Mm -hmm. Physically grabbing something, stealing it, putting it in your pocket. That's the iniquitous part. Mm -hmm. The sin part is we've transgressed God's law. Thou shalt not steal. Thou mm -hmm. shalt not covet. You broke God's law. So it, it's, it's, it's twofold. Mm -hmm. It's the literal act of the sin and then the sin. Right. It's the thought of the sin and then actually committing the exactly. sin. So now you have two parts. David was asking Jehovah to forgive him for both parts. Thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So he forgave, that God forgave David of, of, the, of the twofold part. Exactly. Now, you can multiply that because David uh, had committed adultery. Mm -hmm. uh, the physical act, that was the iniquitous yeah. act. Uh, the adultery, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. uh, you compound that, uh, thou shalt not kill. He killed Uriah. Yeah. So he's compounding it. He's asking God, confessing to God, all the iniquity, the acts... And then he's asking for the forgiveness wherein he transgressed. Exactly. Now, this is where he transgressed not only God, but he transgressed man. Mm -hmm. So Jesus in Matthew 6, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day of our trespasses, our debts, or our sins, as we forgive others yeah. who trespass against mm -hmm. us. This is the Lord's prayer. Yeah. Forgive us. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm struggling with people that, that are so proud, they don't want to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about pride Absolutely. and arrogancy to say, that offends me that I have to ask God for forgiveness. They're becoming the victim. Whew. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and. James 4, 6, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace Dude, unto yeah. the humble. Yeah. Humble people. You see, the, 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 the publican got grace from God because he was humble. The Pharisee got nothing from God because he was proud. Yeah. Remember what it says, James 4, 6. He resisteth the proud. That's why the Bible said, thus he prayed with himself. Mm -hmm. God was nowhere there. God was not a part of the prayer. When we pray truly spiritual prayers, that means God is there. He's hearing us. Yeah. We come in there with arrogancy and pride and, and whatever else, bigotry, self-righteousness. God's not there yeah. because he resists that. Mm -hmm. He pushes away from that. You want more grace in your life? Be humble. Absolutely. You want more grace? Be humble. Publican found grace. Jesus said he went home justified. In other words, he went home forgiven. He was justified not because of what he did, but because he believed in what Christ was going to do on the cross. Mm -hmm. We know that Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justified by faith. What is my faith in? My works? Something I did, something I've said, something I've done. No, no. Your faith must be in what Jesus mm -hmm. did. That's why he's called a savior. Yeah. He redeems us from our sins. And I want to encourage those of you today that maybe you're struggling with a, a type of sin. Don't ever quit fighting. Don't ever quit warring. Always fight the good fight. As a matter of fact, Christianity is the only fight worth fighting. Absolutely. Because um, that's going to, you know, whether you spend eternity in heaven or in hell, you know, that's it's a constant battle. Amen. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold to eternal life. Lay hold to it. Get a hold of it. Seize it. Mm -hmm. I mean, get a hold of it and don't turn loose. Though you fall, don't turn loose. See, God won't turn loose of us. Yeah. We turn loose of him. Absolutely. He said, I'll never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. And, and God delights in people who ask for his mercy. Oh, absolutely. Psalms 147 verse 11 says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and in those that hope in his mercy. Yeah. That word pleasure there means delights in. Yeah. The Lord delights in them that, that look to him, that trust him, that believe what he did, pays their debt of sin. And I can only imagine how it makes them feel when, when we despise that grace from him. You know, it's already been bought, it's already been paid for, and he, he wants to give it to you. So, you know, like I was telling you earlier today, I think that's the most critical time in all humanity is when God's calling you and you despise it. You say, well, I'll... I'll do it tomorrow. There's no telling when that might be the last time that God wants to deal with you. Kind of like your story, you know, you were you were actually in the bar when when God came yep. to you, you know, and you you didn't say, God, just let me finish out the night. Let me yeah. just this is so inconvenient. I'm here, you know, just let me finish out the night. You knew, you knew this this is it. I'm going to grandma's. I'm getting saved. And you got up right out of that bar and you left. Yeah, but I, I knew. Yeah. You know, and and. I want to be careful and cautious what I what I'm saying here because I was different in the sense I was called to be a preacher. Absolutely, yeah. I, I was not just a a man a sinner, that was backslidden yeah. Yeah. in sin. I was running from God's mm-hmm. call. I was thinking the other day, you know, I'm I'm over 65 years of age now, and God called me when I was 12. So 53 years ago, He called me into the work, and as I said, I got to be you know 16, 17, begin to drift and. I, I did. I quit on God. I, you know, I just got to the point I quit because I was having a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's why I'm, I hope my life and testimony speaks to others yeah. what God can do. Absolutely. You got back up. You knew at 12 you were called. You drifted, but you got back up. You didn't stay there. If you've never been called of God, you don't understand that burden yeah. and that hook mm-hmm. that God has in you all your life. Um, God calls you whatever you aspire mm-hmm. to be in life, forget it. Yeah. You know, some of you will remember Johnny Rivers, uh, an artist back in the 60s and early 70s. He, he, I, I, I worked some at a, in a, in a lounge, Paul's Lounge in Charlotte. And um, he came to Charlotte, and um, he wanted me to go back to California with him and be a part of his entourage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember standing in, in the office there of, of, of Paul's lounge and the Holy Spirit says you better not go mm-hmm. you better not go you better not go and I said no one of my, my one of my dear black friends Walt he goes to California and he's gone about two months he comes back he says David you've got to come he said man they have cocaine piled up five pounds at a time on, ta- on a table Wow! and we're partying with Sonny and Sonny Bono and Cher, the Allman Brothers, the Doobie Brothers, man, were, he said, you got to come. And the Holy Spirit said, you better not. You better not go. You better not go. And, and I still wasn't repenting. Yeah. But he was restraining me from getting farther, a, out, farther away, yeah. deeper into sin. Mm-hmm. One night, uh, Paul owned another lounge. And uh, the drummer for the uh, group Got sick, couldn't make it. And they wanted you to play for him. Oh, yeah. the the manager, I'll never forget his name, Gary Boyles. He said, David, you got to go play drums. Holy Spirit said, you better not. Yeah. You better not go. And looking back, I could see how I could have been drawn into oh, that absolutely. atmosphere as a drummer, playing in bars and lounges and clubs, and the devil giving you all those yuppies and whatever, uh, what's the term, uh, they follow the people, you know, groupies. Oh, the paparazzi yeah. thing? Well, well, no, the groupies, oh. you know, girls and stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. And you fall into that snare, and, and it's so hard to get out. Mm-hmm. But I remember the Holy Spirit every time, you better not go, you yeah. better not go. And thank God I didn't, Yeah. you know, because God knew I would be getting deeper and deeper into sin. And you probably would have got to the point where he wouldn't have dealt with you anymore. Well, you know, people don't like ultimatums. Yeah. I'm going to show you, just like God gave me an ultimatum, I'm going to show you that God gives ultimatums about being a backslider. And he, as he can also give you an ultimatum as a sinner, both a sinner and a backslider. God does give ultimatums. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. 
Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else. Mm. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove his candlestick out of his place. Now think about that. Or else. It's a solemn, solemn moment. If Something. you don't do this, I'm going to do this or else. So see, God, I mean, that's strong. Absolutely. If you don't repent, make this right, or else, God says, I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. With me, he was going to cut me off. Yeah. Because I was just running and running, and I ran so hard for about a five-year period. That's a long time to run from God. Yeah. You know, Jonah didn't run near as bad as I did, and I ran terribly from the Lord. But I didn't want to surrender. I didn't want to give my life to him for his service. But I am so glad I did. Absolutely. You know, I, have, I, I had everything to gain and nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And the devil changes that, thinks you have everything to mm -hmm. lose and nothing to gain. Yep. But you do have everything to lose and so much to gain if you will repent of your sins. I hope somehow today, some way, talking about godly repentance, that it has touched your heart in your life. It will give you determination. It will give you a desire. You will aspire to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's Ephesians 6.10. Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You're only as strong as however much God is in you. Mm -hmm. Because greater is he that is in you than he that, than is, he in that is in the world. So the more of God you have in your life, the stronger you are, Absolutely. the more disciplined you are, the more determined you are. Mm -hmm. And in closing, Romans 8, 31 says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. So you need to ask for forgiveness. You got to admit you have sinned. And if you will do those things and humble yourself, God will forgive. He's a God of redemption and, and, and he's a God of great, great forgiveness. Oh, yeah. He's there. He's waiting. And no matter what happens, how you fall, when you fall, don't stay there. Get up and ask God to restore you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video. And if you do have a question that you'd like for us to address, I encourage you just to email us. Lorraine, give them the email. So the email is talking it out at the voice of evangelism.com. Or you can uh, look on Facebook. He doesn't actually use his Facebook. It's um, monitored by an admin or whatever. But you can uh, post on there, leave comments on there. I actually posted a video uh, two days ago uh, saying to leave your comments, topics of something that you might like us to talk about. Uh, and if you do like what we're talking about, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We, we appreciate that and share it with all your friends and family. Yeah, as you well know, I'm not tech savvy by no yeah. means. So I need them and Stephen to help me get the job done. So thank you. God bless you. Pray for our president. And let me encourage you to pray one more thing. Pray that God would smite the hand of the wicked. You know, I've been praying for the last several weeks. God, smite their wicked, ruthless hands. Absolutely. Smite them. You say, well, my God, that's, 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 that's an imprecatory prayer. I don't want the wicked people ruling over us. Absolutely not. And they're trying to take this nation to hell in a handbasket. But God's people must stand. We must arise and get ready. You're going to be persecuted. I know these flam flam preachers aren't telling you the truth, but you're seeing them now attack churches and burn Bibles. I've, I've been preaching this for weeks and weeks and weeks, trying to get you prepared for what's coming. Yeah. This, this is nothing but good and evil colliding, yep, clashing. Exactly. And if you're going to be in the kingdom of God, you got to stay in a, a lifestyle of repentance. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you. Thank you and may God bless you. We want to thank you for tuning in today as we discuss current events from a biblical perspective. Please feel free to send us your questions. Who knows, your question may be the one they discuss on the next edition of Talking It Out. Please send your emails to talking it out at the voice of evangelism.com. Again, talking it out at the voice of evangelism.com. Or write us at Talking It Out, P.O. Box 502, Kaiser, North Carolina, 28020. Again, that's P.O. Box 502, 
Kaiser, North Carolina, 28020. 